The heart-wrenching devastation in Kentucky and the surrounding regions due to several tornadoes has caught everyone's attention. Fortunately, meteorologists have been increasingly capable of issuing tornado warnings and have greatly reduced tornadoes-related death tolls. But despite adequate warning, one tornado took direct aim on Mayfield, Kentucky, causing buildings to collapse and a horrible death toll. The USA experiences more tornadoes than elsewhere, suffering over 1,100 tornadoes a year. This is due to the mountain configurations that funnel cold, dry Arctic air southward to collide with warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico moving northward. Tornadoes are most common in the spring as solar warming drives warmer air northwards to collide with the retreating cold winter air. Although rare in the winter, tornadoes also happen in the winter. Disturbingly, every disaster brings out the ambulance chasers hoping, hoping to profit from tragedy. As has become all too common, the ambulance chasing climate journalists wasted no time trying to attribute climate change to this catastrophe as seen by the Associated Press story that is now circulating in many outlets. Despite most scientists admitting that attribution of tornadoes to climate change is extremely difficult, the AP journalists tried to force a connection with statements like, well, warm weather was a critical ingredient in the tornado outbreak, and the standard blather that extreme storms are becoming more common because we have a lot warmer air masses in the cool season that can support these types of severe weather outbreaks. But the science does not support such narrative. As seen in the illustration, both cold and warm air is required. Tornadoes develop when the atmosphere becomes unstable as cold dry air overlays warm moist air. These conditions will then promote columns of intensely rising air. In addition, tornado formation requires spin, caused by winds from various directions, called wind shear, imparting rotation. I noticed all those tornado promoting conditions were developing the day before, so I am sure weather forecasters did too. Here are screenshots from the website of Earth Null School, a site I highly recommend everyone who is interested in understanding weather and climate. I roughly overlaid a map of the American states to help visualize the approximate locations of tornadoes. And the green circle here identifies the location of Mayfield, Kentucky. This screenshot shows cold air in the blue colors coming from the west and, and the Arctic colliding with warm air, the orange color, intruding from the Gulf of Mexico. Temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are just average, so the intruding warm air is not unusually warm, but does raise Mayfield, Kentucky temperatures to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. However, what has been unusual is the colder temperatures over the Great Plains. The white lines in this uh, screenshot represent the surface winds. The brighter the white, the stronger the winds. On the website, those winds are animated. So I have added red arrows to show, to show wind directions. With temperatures around southeastern Kansas at about 40 degrees, winds from the northwest are cold, colliding with warm air from the south, creating lift and spin that's needed to spawn winter tornadoes. This screenshot is taken from the exact same time, but with an overlay of the atmosphere's total precipitable water. The cold air to the west and the north is very dry, the brown color. The warm air intruding from the Gulf of Mexico is very moist, the blue color. Thus, all the conditions to spawn winter tornadoes are in place throughout the Mississippi River Valley. It is also well established that a dip in the jet stream as cold air pushes southwards is associated with extreme weather events and tornadoes. At the bottom of the trough, wind speeds are slower, 
but the speeds increase as the winds exit the trough to the east. This increase in upper level wind speed promotes a stronger lower pressure zone at the surface that intensifies cyclones and tornadoes. Accordingly, this screenshot of the upper level winds at about 500 hectopascals, approximately 800 feet above uh, sea level, shows an upper level trough forming to the west of Kentucky. The town of Mayfield is situated directly below the region where the, the jet stream is increasing speed and intensifying storms. So why did these conditions develop? Well, one piece of the puzzle is the location of the Bermuda High Pressure System and its clockwise circulation of winds. The Bermuda High is a key factor affecting tropical weather as well as how much warm, moist air gets pumped into the eastern USA. Scientists compare the ever-changing position and strength of the Bermuda High to the motion of a cork in a bathtub Various waves and disturbances shift its location, making weather predictability very difficult, never mind determining any climate trends. When located further east in the Atlantic, droughts in the Midwest and even eastern USA can happen. The further west the Bermuda Highs are located, the greater the amount of warm, moist air gets pumped into the USA. Now, one factor affecting the location of the Bermuda High is the natural North Atlantic Oscillation, which can change its phase from month to month. When the Nat North Atlantic Oscillation is in its positive phase, pressure increases as well as the strength of the trade winds, and that pushes the Bermuda High further westward. So the North Atlantic Oscillation is used in weather forecasting. While recently bouncing between uh, positive and negative phases, scientists had predicted the North Atlantic Oscillation would remain in its positive phase through mid-December 2021. And as a result, moist air was indeed pushed up the Mississippi River Valley in the winter, supplying the key ingredients that spawned the deadly tornadoes in Kentucky. The mainstream media's exploitation of this tragedy is another disturbing example of ambulance chasing climate change journalists failing to inform the public about natural extreme weather events. Just as I finish crafting this presentation, I see Dr. Roy Spencer published an article on how increasing cold weather increases tornadoes. In terms of departures from normal, so far this year in the Northern Plains has been one of the coldest places as average temperatures are 5 to 10 degrees below normal. Spencer also posted this graph showing the declining trend in violent tornadoes, again refuting the idea that global warming is related to any increase in destructive tornadoes. Choosing to fearmonger a bogus climate crisis narrative is so disgustingly shameful. But sadly, President Biden despite lacking any scientific knowledge, joined the fearmonger saying, the intensity of the weather across the board has some impact as a consequence of the warming of the planet and climate change. The fact is that we all know, really, everything is more intense when the climate is warming everything. And obviously it has some impact here. Really, Joe? So up next, I still plan several short educational videos discussing how naturally varying locations and intensities of atmospheric pressure systems are the control knob that control climate. So people can gain an understanding of what determines climate and severe weather events. Although not intending to start with the effect on tornadoes, this tragedy prom prompted the first of several of more in that series. And until then, embrace renowned scientist Thomas Huxley's advice that skepticism is the highest of duties and blind faith the one unpardonable sin. And if you appreciate the science clearly presented here, science rare, rarely presented by mainstream media, then please give it a like, 
give it a share, or copy the video's URL and email it to your friends. Subscribe to my channel to see all the videos I've been presenting, or read my book, Landscapes and Cycles, An Environmentalist Journey to Climate Skepticism. Thank you.